Hello, and thank you for viewing our presentation today. We're from Enroll Wyoming, which is a logo we developed with our partners around the state of Wyoming so that folks know that when they see these logos, they know they can come to us for non-partial assistance in enrolling into healthcare, the healthcare marketplace. We are with the Wyoming Institute of Population Health. We're part of Cheyenne Regional Medical Center. Our goal is building bridges between healthcare delivery systems, patients, and communities. This is our other logo that you may become more familiar with. We found it to be, as we've traveled the state, to be very helpful for those who are uninsured, underinsured, or those who have found insurance to be too costly. Today's presentation will go over the role of a navigator, which is myself certified application counselors, overview of the health insurance marketplace, and give you a place to go for assistance. By the end of the presentation, you'll know where to go, how to enroll if you wish, and how to get further assistance. This is intended for educational purposes and not a political forum. What is the role of a navigator? We're here to educate those about the marketplace, uh, we have a little bit of an expertise. We've read up on it. We've assisted people with applications online from A to Z. We can give you information about what we've got done to get past roadblocks, glitches in the system, answer questions. It's fair and impartial information. We're not affiliated with an insurance company and we are not part of the Health Care Act itself. We are just part of a nonprofit that's offering education around the state of Wyoming. We assist you if you wish to enroll, and we are very interested in protecting the privacy and security of your information. We will not take any information from you, we will not ask for any information from you, and will not ask for any fees. When you're filling out the information, we will hand you your screen name and that kind of thing, and you will take it home with you. We do not take anything with us away from our presentation as well. Affordable Care Act provisions. A little bit about the act itself. It's intended to improve quality, lower health care costs through free preventative care. Intent is to get people to the doctor sooner to diagnose problems before they become larger issues. Reduce discounts for senior citizens and prescriptions. Offer protection against health care fraud, Medicaid fraud included. Small business tax credits are available for those who qualify to offer insurance for their employees. Huge component of this is pre-existing conditions are no longer an issue. Children under the age of 26 can remain on their parents' policy, regardless if they are living with their parents. These are the requirements for 2014 and beyond. You must have a minimum essential health coverage, which I'll go over what those qualifications are. So a policy in place. Qualify for an exemption. Those individuals I'll identify in just a few minutes. Or make a shared responsibility, which is the mandate fee from the IRS. So who doesn't have to worry about the mandate or obtaining new insurance? If you have Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, which is Kid Care, TRICARE, VA benefits, those programs remain in place. You do not have to worry about receiving a fee from the IRS, a mandate, or obtaining new insurance. If you have employee-sponsored coverage that is affordable, or if you've obtained insurance on your own that has the minimum essential coverages, once again, those coverages remain in place and you do not have to worry about an additional fee or obtaining insurance through the marketplace. Exemptions to the individual mandate are those that are below the th tax filing threshold. Individuals whose insurance will cost more than 8% of their household income. Tribal members, religious exemptions. If you are incarcerated, however, if you're being prepared to release soon, then it'll be a good idea to get something in place for when that occurs. We're also family, finding that families are neglected. They will need to have insurance in place, even though maybe the main spouse is incarcerated. Individuals that are not present, lawfully present in the United States, 
or there is a gap. So if, there, if you do not have insurance for a three month period of time, there is no mandate. And if you're abroad for more than 330 days. Even though there is an exemption here, it doesn't mean these individuals shouldn't look into having insurance in place. Often asked, how much will this cost me if I don't obtain insurance? In 2014, it will be $95 per adult, up to 1% of the household income. So it caps out at $285. A child is half of the adult fee. As you can see in 2016, it increases to $695 minimum per adult, up to 2.5% of the household income, capping out at $2,085. The next video will be a little bit about the Health Insurance Act, a little bit of terms, and what an insurance policy is. You can do all the things you do with more peace of mind, less worry, and more financial security when you know you've got health insurance. And now everyone will be able to find health insurance at the Health Insurance Marketplace. It's an online shopping site where you shop for health insurance that fits you with low cost and even zero premium plans for those whose income qualifies. If you or your family are uninsured or just looking for better coverage, you can see your options all in one place with one application. It's a place to compare a wide range of quality health insurance plans, to review them all side by side and choose the one that's right for you. You'll find the information clear and easy to understand. You'll explore the marketplace at your own pace. You can compare prices and benefits, see an explanation of what a premium is and what a plan will cost you every month before you make a choice. And every plan will cover you with comprehensive benefits, from your visits to the doctor or the hospital to your prescriptions, to screenings for cancer and other conditions, and no plan can turn you away even if you already have an illness or condition. The Health Insurance Marketplace, part of the healthcare law. Opening October 1st, you can learn more right here, right now. And be ready for the new world of health insurance shopping. So who's eligible? If you live in a qualified health plan service area, so in our case, that would be Wyoming. I'm often asked, what if I receive care in Colorado or Montana or Utah or another area, even though I, I'm living in Wyoming and my policy is from Wyoming? That would be covered. I would look to make sure that they are covered under the in-network providers. They can be covered if they are an out-of-network provider, but that will be a higher out-of-pocket cost. There is a cap on the in-network and out-of-pocket costs, which you can determine when you look at, at your summary benefits, which I'll show you how to find those at the end of this presentation. You must be a U.S. citizen. However, if you're not a U.S. citizen, but your children are present in the United States, then you may obtain a child-only policy up to the age of 21. This is very important because they can receive the preventative care and have insurance in place and have access to care as is needed. If you are incarcerated, then you're not eligible, which we went over, but you maybe look at it as you become ready for release. Approximately 83,000 individuals are uninsured in the state of Wyoming. Hopefully, 51% of those are eligible for a tax credit or cost sharing, which I'll go over what that is in just a few moments. Here's the website, healthcare.gov. Please pay special attention to the .gov at the end of that website. There are other websites that are very similar to this. One of them is healthcare.com. That is not the place where you will receive tax credits or cost sharing. Healthcare.gov will give you the online shopping experience by being able to compare the policies easier and have the education component. Once again, if you do not go through healthcare.gov, you will not receive the tax credits or the cost sharing. So we have a new program initiated by the government, the Affordable Care Act, also abbreviated as ACA. 
also known as Obamacare. A lot of individuals have found this confusing. Jimmy Kimmel even did a comedy skit and had people describe the difference between Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. Once again, those are the same thing. As well as the exchange. We hear in the news a lot about the exchange. That is the way the state describes the website, healthcare.gov. It is also referred to as the marketplace. So the website is described as the marketplace because they're trying to make it an online ex shopping experience, making it easier to obtain insurance. Health insurance has been a difficult thing to obtain and probably always will be, but they're trying to make it so that there's as few dominoes in place as possible. With this website, you are able to compare the policies in one place of all the insurance companies that are participating. This video explains it just a little bit further. How to pick the right health insurance plan. How do you find a health insurance plan that fits your budget and meets your needs? A good plan protects you and your family at a price that's right for you. You can feel safe knowing that all marketplace plans cover a core set of essential health benefits like checkups, having a baby, emergency care, prescription drugs, and more. Most marketplace plans must also include free preventive care like shots and screening tests. And don't worry if you have a pre-existing condition. You'll see the same plans at the same cost as everyone else. You can't be denied coverage. Here are a few things to think about before you look at health insurance plans. Health insurance is a contract between you and your insurance company. You buy a plan, and the company agrees to pay part of your medical costs when you get sick or hurt. Although all plans in the marketplace cover a core set of benefits, the amount you'll pay will be different from plan to plan. In general, if your monthly premium payments are low, the cost of getting care, or how much you'll pay out of your own pocket for things like prescriptions or hospital stays, will be higher. And if you pay more each month for your premium, those other costs will be lower. Finding a good health plan means balancing how much you pay each month with how much health care you think you and your family are going to need during the year. If you're healthy and don't go to the doctor very often, then a plan with a low monthly premium will probably cost you the least. But if you need to go to the doctor a lot or you need a lot of expensive prescriptions, you should look at plans where the cost of getting care, or how much you'll pay out of your own pocket, will be lower. If you really need a lot of health care, spending a bit more on your monthly premiums will actually save you money in the long run. In the video, you saw how they explained the marketplace. In there, there are two companies in the state of Wyoming that have participated. That is Win Health and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They have vetted and have the minimum essential coverages in place and have protections for the consumer in place as well. There are metallic plans that start out at bronze, increase to silver, then gold, then platinum, each paying an additional amount of out-of-pocket expenses. The essential health benefits on the next slide go over the coverages that I discussed earlier that make part of a qualified health plan. These are the essential components that must be a part of a policy to make it a qualified health plan. They have extended many policies including preventative and wellness care, mental and health, pediatric services including oral vision care. This is also the wrinkle that's caused people to receive cancellation notices. If their policies did not have all of these components, they may have received a cancellation from that. We've also noted that most of those who've come to us with those cancellations, of course, have received additional components to their health insurance, but have been able to obtain insurance that is at least somewhat cost effective to them. And the next part that causes a little bit more confusion, but it's an interesting part, is the marketplace as an eligibility system for premium tax credits and cost sharing reductions. The tax credit is the amount the government will pay to assist you with your premiums each month. And this next video goes into more detail with that, and then I'll recap at the end of it.
When you shop for insurance at the Health Insurance Marketplace, you'll find good quality health plans. And by answering a few simple questions, we'll be able to see whether you're eligible for one or more no-cost or low-cost insurance programs, like Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, and a new benefit called the Advanced Premium Tax Credit, which is available only through the Health Insurance Marketplace. What makes the Advanced Premium Tax Credit advanced is that you get the credit each month instead of waiting until you file your federal tax returns the next year. With APTC, part of your monthly payment is made by the federal government directly to the health plan in which you've enrolled. If you qualify, there are three ways you can apply your advanced premium tax credit. You can decide to spread out the credit equally across the entire year. You can decide to use some of your monthly APTC which increases the amount you'll pay each month, but makes it more likely you'll receive a refund on next year's tax return. This may be a good option if you're unsure about your income. Or you may decide not to use any of your APTC during the year and simply get the money refunded on next year's tax return. Your eligibility and the amount of your advanced premium tax credit depends on the size of your household and your household income. Changes in life, like having a baby, getting married, or changing jobs, can affect the amount of your tax credit or even your eligibility. For instance, if you make more than you expected, your advanced premium tax credit will be lower and you might owe some money at the end of the year. But if you make less than you expected, you may get a refund. If you come back to this site and report your changes when they happen, you'll get your tax credit calculations updated automatically. If you qualify for the Advanced Premium Tax Credit, any way you use it, you'll still get a break on the cost of your health insurance to help you get the coverage that meets your needs and budget. This is a significant amount of information that's given at one time. As you can see, there's the APTC, which is the Advanced Premium Tax Credit, which means that that's the amount that will be paid for you that goes towards your policy directly from the government to your insurance carrier. An example would be an individual I met with, age 51, makes around $17,000, is a temp at Walmart, but wanted to have insurance in place. Her premiums were going to be around $365 a month, which is more than her rent. After the tax credits, her portion of the premiums will only be $15 a month which was well within her budget and she was able to obtain insurance have all the preventative care in place another individual was an insurance or excuse me a real estate agent her premiums were approximately eleven hundred and twelve or excuse me one thousand one hundred and fifty two dollars a month after her credits her premiums are going to be approximately two hundred dollars a month once again well within their system in their uh, availability this next slide introduces us to the income bracket that's available for the premium tax credit. 100% indicates the baseline that's available where credits will start. You can look at the household size, then you look at the minimum, which is 100%, up to 400%. The tax credits will decrease from 100 to 400 once you exceed 400 then the tax credits will cease and the premiums are as you see without the credits below 100 percent there is no tax credit available individuals can shop on the marketplace but they will pay full price for the premiums in the event medicaid expands in the state of wyoming those would be included in that bracket the next video goes over cost sharing which is the out-of-pocket expenses when you use the health insurance marketplace to shop for health insurance, you'll find good quality health plans, and you may be able to lower the costs of purchasing one of those plans. As you answer questions in the application, we'll see if you qualify for cost-sharing reduction plans. CSR plans offer lower costs of getting care, what you'll pay for things like emergency room visits, prescription drugs, and more, and you'll generally pay less each month for these types of plans. We'll show you all of the plans you're eligible for, including CSR plans. CSR plans are all silver plans, but you'll notice that the costs of CSR plans are about what you'd pay for a bronze plan. If you qualify, cost-sharing reduction plans are typically a great choice for you and your family. 
the eligibility for cost sharing is smaller than the tax credits for individuals with incomes between 100 percent and 250 percent will qualify for the out-of-pocket tax uh, cost sharing. You must also be receiving the premium tax credit and be enrolled in a silver level plan. As mentioned earlier, there are several different le metallic levels. They've described the, the levels as metallic levels. With the tax credit, you can choose any of the other plans, but to receive the cost sharing, you must select a silver level plan. Tribal members will have no cost sharing if their income is less than 300% of the federal poverty level. Federal poverty level is on that chart I showed you just a few moments ago. So how to apply? You can submit it through online. This way, online you will receive immediate results. You will be able to shop the plans, have the education component. If you're not comfortable with that, you may do it by phone. I would allot between 45 minutes to an hour to complete this process. It may also be done by mail. This would be the longest time to complete the process. We're hearing it could take as long as six weeks to complete the process by mail. They will, you will submit the application. They will send information back to you so you can start to select plans. And so it, there's a little bit of a back and forth with the mail process. In person is also an option. You can meet with a navigator, certified application counselor, which is someone who is available to fill out your application, hasn't gone through as much training as the navigator, or you can go directly to an insurance agent, such as Blue Cross and Blue Shield or Win Health. What you would ask them is to still include you for the tax credits and the cost sharing. So they will refer you back to the website, but they will assist you in that process. When you're in the process of verification, whether it's by paper, phone, mail, in person, you will be determined to be eligible by giving them critical information, such as your social security number, name, household information. If it's online, that data is sent out to a hub and is, is verified with, better, with a uh, credit bureau, IRS, and the Homeland Security. That information is then released, is erased. The only information that is saved is your screen name, household information. Once you're determined to be who you are, and approximate incomes are within uh, trended limits, then you're determined to be eligible for a qualified health plan. Then they will show you the selected plans that are available. You will be able to determine the amount of premium tax credit that you wish to take. If you would like the maximum, then you can select that or you can select a zero amount. As we discussed earlier, that is the amount that you will be paid for your premiums. Please keep that in check. If you ask for too much credit that you're not eligible for, let's say your income changes in 2014, then you will want to make those adjustments because at the end of that year you will receive an aggregate and you could receive a, a, a fee from the IRS or a credit back. It's better to keep it in check. Cost sharing will also be displayed as well. At that point you will have the option to enroll in the marketplace. There will be a selection button to choose the plan that you wish to choose and then proceed on. Also, this is an application to enroll in Medicaid or Kid Care, CHIP. Once you select that, you, it will be sent to the department that is covering that at that time. I would recommend that you follow up with that within a couple of days just to make sure that that process is engaged. So here's the website as it stands today. A selection for C plans is available which will show you the plans that are available in your service area, which in our case is Wyoming, and it will give you additional information as well. This is the place where you would answer a few quick questions, then it will display your approximate tax credits and premiums. See if I can get lower cost is another selection. This one will offer additional information. For instance, in this case, we have a Wyoming resident now, if you're going to use this estimator, at the very top, number one, select a state. A lot of times people forget to select that and they will get a national average. Since Wyoming and Alaska are the two highest premiums in the nation, 
you will want to make sure that you have a good estimate of what your premiums are going to be. So select that number one, Wyoming, and put in your zip code. Then you'll put in your $2,014. Some people will say, I am self-employed, I'm with agriculture, I may be changing jobs. Please estimate your 2014. As I stated earlier, you can go back and make those changes throughout the year so that your tax credits will uh, correctly reflect the, the correct amount. In this case, we have an individual $25,000, uh, adult, non-smoking. The premiums will increase as much as 50% if you are a tobacco user. This person would fall in the 218% poverty level. Their maximum out of pocket for their premiums would be 6.92%. Their premiums for this individual would be $4,735 per year. They will receive a subsidy of $3,006, so their new amount that they would pay for a year would be $1,729, which is approximately $145 a month. Apply Now gives you the option to continue on and apply for the coverage. At this point, you will be asked for your email address. Please use an email address that you can access easily because you will need to select the link within a window of time. I don't know how short the window of time is, but you need to select that link. Then it will take you back to the website and it will activate your account. At that time, you will start to enter your information. At this point, it will be your who is included in your plan, their ages, tobacco users, that kind of thing will be entered at this point. At the end of this process, you will be taken to a window similar to this, this is a fictitious plan, that will show you the monthly premium, deductibles, out-of-pocket expenses. It will also give you a chance to select, if you see on the lower right hand side, summary of benefits, which gives you a detailed listing of what is payable in the plan. Also provider directory is available if you want to find out if a specific physician or clinic is included in this, pol in this policy. The enrollment period is a window of time. You may have heard many different dates from October 1st, December 15th, and you get confused of what those are. It's an open enrollment period to enroll in insurance. October 1st is when it's began, and that's passed, through March 31st is your last opportunity to enroll in the insurance. Within that period, you see smaller windows of time. Once you enroll and you pay your premium, then there's a lag between that time to when your policy becomes effective. As of right now, December 23rd was the last time to, to have your application in place to receive coverage by January 1st. Right now, if you have your application in place and you've paid your premium, you will have coverage available February 1st. Let's say you completed everything in December. The first time insurance will come into place will be January 1st. If you didn't have the application completed by December 23rd, the next time you can have insurance in place would be February 1st. Like I said, there's a little bit of a lag between the time when the insurance goes in place and when you applied. This window of time can be varied if you have a life-changing event. If you have a baby coming, divorce, change of jobs, you move to a different state, you have 60 days to go into the marketplace and get insurance in place, which is called a triggering life event. Recognized Indian tribes do not have to worry about this window of time. That is our presentation. Once again, we are in Roll, Wyoming. That is our logo. We're with the Wyoming Institute of Population Health. We're glad to help in any way that we can through the marketplace if you wish to enroll for healthcare.gov. If you want additional information, we are partnered with 211 in Wyoming. If you're on a border town, let's say Afton, Cody, you may receive the, the neighboring states 211. Please ask them to refer you back to the Wyoming 211. We have trained navigators that can assist you or get you in contact with someone in your local area. Thank you for your time and good luck.